Hello everyone, my name is Nachiketa and welcome back to Project Pro channel. This video we are going to show you how to execute a time series forecasting project on any given data set using a library called as AutoTS. Now AutoTS is a Python library which allows you to do time series forecasting on any given data set without having to do most of the pre and post processing required for any type any data. You don't have to worry about outliers in your data set. You don't have to worry about ensuring stationality or seasonality. You don't have to figure out the order of the model. All you have to do is call the library, give it your data set and you get accurate predictions in no time. So let's straight away dive into the code and I'll walk you through the steps as we move along. The first step is to install the auto ts libraries and you need to install some other libraries on which some functions depend upon you also need to install the fp profit library which is another library by facebook which gives you accurate time series forecasting predictions so we start by importing all the necessary libraries the next step is to read your data set using pandas right you can choose any data set you want i am using a particular data set which contains sales data of alcohol throughout a period of time so the first step is to read it using the pandas.read underscore csv command once you read the data set the next step is to understand your data and just do some basic visualization and get some information about your data set which will help you make better predictions so using the head functions we print the first five rows of the data set just to see how many columns it has what kind of data we have so you can see the data set starts with two columns in one column we have the date which starts from 1992 monthly data and on the other column the column title seems to be some random number but this contains the sales volume of a particular alcohol brand right so we're not bothered with what the unit of sales is because this prediction column is gonna keep changing uh, for different data sets right all we care about is you have a date column you have a prediction target and from there on you need to build models to forecast that we in the next step using the tail command i print the last five values so i can see the range of the data set according to the time so i can see the data set uh, contains values up till 2019 january right so that is some information that's good to have next I can see the name of the column which I am predicting is a bit hard to pronounce. So I'm going to use the pandas rename function to rename the column to the sales value. I pass the argument in place equals to true, which basically replaces the existing column name by sales. Next step is to tell pandas that the column which has the, so the column with the date title is actually date values and panda should not treat it like a string value. To do that, we call the pandas to date time function and we pass in the column which we want to be interpreted as date. So I pass the date column over here and prediction column over here. I'm passing these values over here so that whenever you have a new data set, all you have to do is you have to change the column name over here. If you have the names, uh, the name might be slightly different, right? So the name for the column in your data set might be slightly different and the target column for you could also be slightly different. So just make that change over here and the rest of the code will be good to go for your particular project. Once I do this, Pandas now understands that it's dealing with date values over here. The next step is to understand the time period duration, right? It's better to understand for how many months or how many years or how many days are you making prediction so that accordingly you can split your test and train data sets as well. So I simply call the max function on my date column and the minimum function, which basically gets the maximum and minimum date. And I'm subtracting that to get the time period duration, which is 9,800 days. So this is, so this is somewhere close to 325 months of data, which we have over here. The next step is to get some more information about the data set by using the info command. This exactly gives you the column types in your data set and it also informs you how many entries you have and how many non null values you have. It's important to note if you have 325 entries, right? And it says, let's say only 100 non null values, which means the other values are null values or there could be missing values in your data set. Now, normally the auto TS library automatically uh, removes missing data from your data set. 
but i have also included a code snippet for you over here which can help you drop the missing values using the drop any command so i call the drop any function use in place equal to true and i reset all the index and i reset all the indexes because one column would straight away be removed when a data set is missing right so this is something which is optional in my data set i don't have any non null values so my data set shape is going to remain the same but this is something you can do if you are running into issues because of missing data the next step is to split your data set into training and testing now remember the time series model will be trained on your training data and once a model has been trained it will run predictions on your test data to verify if it's actually good by calculating various evaluation metrics right so all you need to care about over here is the time period you set so since i have monthly data what i want to do is i want to set the last 12 i want to set the last 2 years as the test data so i'm mentioning minus 24 over here which basically means that the entire data up till the last 24 values will be reserved in training and the last 24 months would be reserved in the test data set so once you make this split it's good to plot your data set and see how your training and testing data looks like and you can also visualize the variations the seasonality in your data set over here so i take my data columns and i call the plot function and i mention some arguments over here which are basically the figure size the title of the particular plot the font size as well as the label so even entire this snippet of code will also remain same for you so i do the same for the testing data set and i call the plt.show function to actually plot the data set on to the console so this is how my data set looks like and right of the start i see there is a seasonality and i can see there's an increasing trend which means with years the sales in alcohol is increasing the orange lines over here are the test data set so in normal time series forecasting problems you would have to do a lot of pre processing on your data set you will have to figure out the stationarity of your data you will have to figure out the order of a time series model which you want to use to make predictions however with auto time series you do not have to worry about anything you simply have to give the data set to the model converting that into stationary data to make predictions it will automatically do in the back end for you so all the pre processing steps are finished by now and now i simply have to call my model using the auto time series function i provided the forecast period this normally has to be equal to the test data set period so that it can make predictions on that period and see if the model is actually good i provide the score type which is root mean squared error which it will use to find out the difference between actual values and predicted values i give the time interval which is monthly data in my case and model type is best which means it automatically chooses the best performing model for your particular data so when you train the model it will try variations of different models it will try models like arima sarima uh, machine learning models it, it will also try fp profit library to build different models so out of all the performing models you can select the best one to make predictions to actually fit your data set all you have to do is call model.fit provide it the training data and you simply have to provide it the date column and the target column which will be your prediction column so it can make prediction so it can make predictions for that so now i run this cell and i can see lot of information being printed out i can see uh, it is running augmented dicky filo tests which you need to calculate in normal forecasting problems it's trying variations of different models it is calculating the rule screen error the absolute error in order to be able to select the best model over here we can see the sari max model is being trained it automatically figures out the order of the auto regression part the moving average part even if these terms are not making sense to you you do not have to worry about that because auto ts is taking care of that for you right so you can see that different models are being tried out and it is printing what the best model was once this process is finished you can see plots of performance of all the different models right over here you can see your fb profit models predictions the black dots over here represent the actual values and the blue line represents the models predictions you can see the actual values versus the forecasted values of the model 
the orange line over here represents the forecasted values and we can see that the profit fb profits model were able to capture the variations really well similarly we can see the analysis for sarimax model we can see the analysis of the xg boost model which gives you how much importance it gave to different parameters so we can see it gave the year the highest importance as well as the sales in the previous year the highest importance in actually forecasting the future right so this is something pretty amazing because all of this requires lots of uh, processing and lots of visualization calculations processing on a data set which auto ts automatically to care for us so finally what i'll do i'll call the model dot get leaderboard function which will print the top performing models and i can see the profit model performed the best with the root mean squared error of 694 so general rule is lower the root mean squared error the better the model is so we select so right now we select the best performing model and use it to make predictions so to make predictions we simply call the model dot predict function and provide the time period for which we want to predict so when i pass 48 so it will provide predictions from the moment my training data ends from there up till the next 48 months so you can vary this parameter according to how much in the future you want to make predictions so over here i print the data set and i can see lots of columns over here which fb profit gives me right the main column that i would be interested in is the date column and we have something called as the by hat which is the actual prediction so i simply take these two columns and i visualize it over here so i again call the plot functions and i give it and i take y hat and along with that i print the test data set so i can see my test data and prediction together to see how good my model is so the orange line over here is the test data right so my test data ends over here somewhere around 2019 and up till that the model predictions were very close to what the actual value was and from the moment the test data ends from there up till the next 2 years from there up till the next 2 years we can see the predictions over here so this is a very useful tool if you want to make predictions into the future in the easiest way possible for more such time series projects i would recommend you check out the project pro channel where there are end to end data science problems with solved solution as well and if you did like this video do like this video and subscribe to the project pro channel and i'll see you again in the next video